Oh, I need to do the title. Heritage through Utah. Uh, SD, uh, it's uh, Daniel Higgins. Uh, Feather over Canyon. And it's the SD70 ACE DNRGW. James Dog, your roommate's getting you into train sim. Awesome. Conductor, alright, we can depart Provo Yard for helper now. This is the Soldier Summit, not Feather River Canyon. <laughs> Hang on, let me fix that. <clears throat> we are low priority and dispatch is stopping us at Gilali. Let's highball. <sighs> Goodbye, Flying Scotsman. Swanee39, really appreciate what you're doing, very classy, great stream by the way, keep up the good work. Thank you very much for the donation, uh, Swanee39, puts us up to 3042. Right. I cannot think straight and talk straight. Well, it's pretty much no different to normal, to be honest. It's usually just a load of old babble. By the way, folks, don't make yourself ill trying to stay up for the stream. If you get really tired, um, then at least go and have a nap. Sorry. If you're not used to staying up, don't. Egon Spengler, what are my thoughts on uh, friends and I used to stand up to Ogden, Utah and Easter Green River, Wyoming? Uh, the way that it works, or the way that the agreements or so forth work, is that um, you can take these routes and do what you like with them, but you accept that you, when you distribute them, you can't distribute the assets folder. So you can clone these routes, modify them, and then upload them to Steam Workshop. What you can't do is distribute the assets folder. So the idea is that anyone who uses the route must own the work, must own Soldier Summit. Does that count for mods? No, absolutely not, Dave. <laughs> yes, of course it does. I don't want anyone getting sick. And if you need to be dry operating heavy machinery at all, then you need to be uh, thinking of that first. Winning Moss must complete the whole 24 hours, yeah. <laughs> it's really good. I mean, we've got so many mods on now. Last last time, we got to this time, and I think it was Fringe Styling. Was that was about it, actually? We're not blaming anybody. It's uh, This is hard work. We've got... Uh, Fridgestone doesn't care about his well being. <laughs> Lovely horn on this, it's very controllable. Dave, anyway, Dave says if you don't want anyone to get sick, easy cure, turn the camera off. Yeah, thanks, Dave. <laughs> T 
GWR is a Grange indeed, uh, and then we've got North Somerset, and then we're back on North Jersey coastline, or we're on North Jersey coastline. Yeah, 64, going out for a walk is actually a good idea. As long as you're happy, we're going out for a walk in your neighbourhood at this time of day. Tea. Simon Lemonson, when your alt tab at train sim, it crashes and blocks. Yeah, the alt tab is really... Um, dodgy thing to do. What I run the game in is borderless windowed full screen. So you run it in borderless and you set the resolution to match the same as your screen. It looks exactly the same as if it's running full screen but it has the advantage that you can load other screens on top of it. Let me switch over to my desktop for example. So this is my, my desktop. I've got other windows on top of it and I can bring other windows on top and switch between them um, and call them back and uh, it doesn't cause many problems. You can't do when the game is in actual proper full screen mode. So is the plane simulator the same as this train simulator? Well, originally in the heritage, you know, the heritage. Is um, it was? I mean, there wasn't the same code, but Microsoft did Flight Sim, and they did Train Simulator. This is a long way removed from the original Microsoft Train Simulator, but there's certainly a heritage there. It's really annoying. I've got this empty bag of buttons taunting me. Uh, where do you set that up? In the settings screen, um, in the settings screen, there's a you drop the thing down. You can either have it in windowed, in full screen, or in borderless, and you want borderless. And then there's a resolution drop down, which means you can change it to which means if you're running it at 1920 by 1080, set it to 1920 by 1080. I think that was the last pack of buttons. I guess I could send it to the shops, but I might find them. Should come back with other pro other things. <laughs> Raiden five one three. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for the follow. Take it, uh, Jimbo. How would I compare this to Trains a New Era or even TS12? I'm probably not the best person to ask that question because I work for the people that make this game. <laughs> Obviously, I think it's better, but I think it's probably a more complex answer than that. I do like Surveyor in Trains, I think that's always been its strong point. Corey Taylor, how am I feeling? I'm doing good actually. We're in the hard bit now. This is the difficult bit between three and five. What a takeaway food. Oh. Imagine if buttons just started to arrive. If you could just send me a gift of buttons, I would be in so much trouble. I'd never be able to stand up. <laughs> Keen Philosopher, thank you for the follow, much appreciated. Victor, I think, yeah, after 38 hours. GWR, I'm actually a backer of trains a new era myself. 
I was a $250 backer of Trains A New Era because uh, I think that uh, competition uh, is healthy, it's a good thing and I kind of wanted to see what they would do. Um, so yeah, I was, I was a backer myself and uh, happy to do so to be honest. Flight Sim Microsoft Flight Simulator X is very, very good, James Dog. Very, very good indeed. Dovetail are actually in the process of putting out their new um, flight school product, which is essentially the first, their first um, foot in the water for um, doing their own flight simulator. Cobra Blue. The epicness of the stream has caused a fan to fail in your PC. Wow. <laughs> <clears throat> it's not so much about cheaper DLC MTA rails, it's more about functionality, features, innovation really more than anything else. Because everyone has different ways of looking at things. And uh, at the end of the day, I want a great train simulator. That's fundamentally what I want. As you know, me personally, I want a great train simulator. So I might not be the right person to do that. I think I am, but I guess you'll find out. But I was very keen to see how um, Oren would innovate. I wanted to encourage that. Kitty just found out there's pie in the fridge. No way. Send some this way. Train's going round a curve. Screenshot number four. 132. James Dog, um, you'll have to ask the moderators. There were 20 FSXs uh, in the uh, prize pot. Someone's pie. Now everyone wants pie. <laughs> Share the pie tomorrow, Kitty. MTA Rails No Engine Driver has migrated to a uh, WordPress based system now and at the moment there's no login with Steam option. Wow, there's still 20 FSX keys available, we had no one picking Flight Simulator. Fourteen l is just a suggestion, absolutely. But I'm watching the chat and I'm talking to you guys. <laughs> I'm not really looking enough at what I'm doing. And what happens is, by the time I look over and think, ah, oh, there's a crossing there, I've got enough time for a 14A, and that's about it. <laughs> oh, look, the whistle board. Let's do it right then. we going in this one? Let me have a look. Gilali. So essentially we're going to go around the first of the loops.
Yeah, don't forget the 20 copies of Flight Simulator FSX Steam Edition <coughs> that are up for grabs. Welcome to pick one of those as your prize. BNSF, the A2A $50 store credit, so the A2A simulations make flight sim add-ons, excellent ones, and you can go to their website, A2A simulations.com I think, um, and then you can um, redeem that code and it will give you $50 store credit to buy add-ons for flight simulator. Um, Matt G, the only FSX add-ons you can get are with the um, A2A simulation stall vouchers. The only other deal, the only other things I've got is FSX itself. Up to it. it means it will give you $50 of credit on the A2A store, and so if you buy something for $35, um, it won't cost you anything, and you'll still have $15 left to spend on something else. There was a $100 voucher as well, but I think someone's already picked that, as they should. That's a cracking prize. That is a really good prize. Cheesecake, James Dog. New York baked cheesecake. Who remembers the Friends episode with the cheesecake? I never looked at New York cheesecake the same ever again. I looked at it much more hungrily. And even though I'd never actually had one of these cheesecakes, somehow I compare the cheesecakes I had to the one that was in the Friends episode. Oh, that wasn't as good as the one in the. How have I known this? I've never eaten the one that was on a TV show. So the things that this thing does. So the A2A price is a gift card, basically. Yeah, central. Jeep fan, well, thank you very much for popping along. Really appreciate it. my marbles again. My marbles went a long time ago, external. Every now and again I fake marbles. <laughs> a request for the cab view. Let's have some cab view action. <coughs> see you later Dave. We'll see you later on hopefully. If not, Thank you for everything you've done um, tonight. Really appreciate it. Fritz, darling, give me back my marbles. No one. I thought it, if anyone had nicked them, it'd be you. <laughs> nice, eh, <hey>, Ruben? <laughs> I 
Uh, DWR, you'll yeah, be about one hour before the North Somerset. Uh, sorry, it's um, one hour before the um, Nestland route, and then it's the North Somerset route, if I remember rightly. Hey, Secret Agent Rubber Duck, welcome. Yeah, 64U2. Um, I'm trying to remember. 42, I think. Yeah, 42. No, 41. 42 this year. Bonus! I'm a year. I, oh, I just gained a year. If I press Z, the sun, you almost had me, BNSF. You almost had me. You press Z, the sun blinds come down. Z turns the engine off. <laughs> I'm still young at heart here. Thanks, MJ Rails. <laughs> SD70 background. That's a good point. I possibly even have one. Don't, but I have an SD80. Let's go for an SD80. You sent me cab shots of a lot of things, Stephen Jam. Like I said, I'm so busy doing other things, I never got a chance to look at them. No, I'm not using any of the new cap shots yet, Stephen Jam. This is another one of those really pretty routes. That's what I'm on to you now, BNSF. Let's just pause it there, because that's quite an interesting shot. I wish I'd got it a moment before that thing. I'll take it. Finn Stalin, no, I can't remember how old you are, unless you're 34, of course. Trains going round a curve time.
How do I keep the map up? Well, if you run the game borderless windowed, you can have anything you like over the top of the game. Cheers, Dave. Thank you for everything. Limit here. What loco is at the back? A pair of Union Pacific SD forty dash twos, by the looks of it. Seems that way. What have we got behind us? Oh, Union Pacific SD70. Yeah, 64 you 2 donate uh, donation. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. <laughs> no, try again. Task list, there you go. Let's <coughs> all go via us till we get to uh, Gilali. <sighs> Two thousand. That would make me sixteen. <laughs> Money on your number six, a little me, then that's pretty good going. Are we keeping you up? <laughs> Alright, PC Fantastic, thanks for uh, joining in, much appreciated. Sir, thank you for the follow. Much appreciated. Thank you. 
New Wales DLC is that different to the Just Trains Western New? Yes, it is. Western Main Line is a much longer, but I'm told more sparsely populated route. But the bigger route does include the little route, essentially, in terms of mileage. Hey there, Clinking Dog. Yeah, we've got uh, 3,048 now, which is amazing. finished Raspberry Pi wireless train controller. I haven't really had a chance to look at it. I mean, I've got the prototype working. But I haven't really taken it any further. GoldenEye, why is there loaded an unloaded version of the HAA wagon? Simple reason that you can't, in a quick drive, have loaded or unloaded versions. So you end up with doing quick drives only ever on loaded versions. Oh, sorry, on unloaded versions. And so um, I believe the unloaded ones can be loaded. I'm not sure about whether the loaded ones can be unloaded, but all the scenarios. I just missed a follow. Um, hang on. MJ Debman 21 thank you for the follow, much appreciated. So it's all about quick drive and making it so that you can have loaded and unloaded wagons on quick drive. NSF, you bought Bristol Cardiff earlier today and you're really, really good. Like the 175. Oh, it's good. I'm glad you're enjoying it. to make QD contests the same way I've shown you on my blog. You go to trainsimlive.blogspot.co.uk. I go through the process of using the blueprint editor to make contests, which is how um, I've always done it. I find it much easier than the contest editor. Going through Thistle Tunnel.
what QD consists have I made? I did mm, all the QD consists on uh, Western Lines of Scotland. And wrote all the quick drive scenarios for it as well. I do like jointed rail. It makes so much more nice noise. Mr. Cubs, how will the keys be sent out? They'll be sent out via Twitch messaging. Um, so after to the after the stream, so Monday, Tuesday, I can collate a list, send it to Dovetail of all of the prize winners and what they've asked for. Order all the keys. Once I get all the keys, I can then send out all the prizes. So it'll be a while. It will be a little while, it will take a bit more organising. The benefit is you've got to choose whatever you like from the uh, collection, of course. Cheers, Josh. Thanks for stopping by. Were you a radio channel worker before? No, no, I've never been on the radio. Well, I'll tell you a lie. I've been on the radio, but only as a guest speaker on a chat show. <laughs> Once. Cheers, GWR. Cheers, Victor. <laughs> If I was on the radio, so I used to run a website called DearDiary.net, and um, this was quite a long time ago, uh, before sites like Blogger.com existed, and um, it was basically a chat show in Australia, funnily enough, um, where they were talking about um, sort of people who write traditional diaries, and then there's this weird phenomenon of people who want to write their diary and publish it on the internet, which is just bizarre and uh, how sort of the internet would affect that and whether it was the same thing or whether it was different and it was an interesting discussion Mr Tranko, yes there was a version of Soldier Summit made or a small portion of Soldier Summit that was made for um, one of the route building competitions websites I've run in my lifetime. Dear Diary don't know, Open Fiction, uh, Atomic Album, UK Train Sim. That's predominantly the ones. I mean they were all Atomic Systems websites. Did they understand my pommy accent? <laughs> 
Well, I think we just about figured it out. Or they just assumed I was talking rubbish and nodded and smiled. Are there any cookies left? No, I didn't have any cookies to offer it. No one gave me any cookies. Do I think Virel will come to TS? I don't think so. I'm trying to remember, but I have a sneaky suspicion they've already said no. When was there a route building competition? Oh, a long time ago, BNSF. If you go onto UKTrainSim.com, on the left hand side, to the uh, in the top left corner, if you look down the menus, or if that's there on the left hand side, there's two pages in there, one talking that uh, the talk about each of the two route building competitions. What happened, who, what the entries were, what the prizes were, and all the rest of it. They were really good, actually. It was one month route building um, with certain rules and um, some of the entries. I mean, Western Lines of Scotland started out as a competition. It was actually the prize winner of, I think, the first of the route building competitions called the Port Road. It was um, superb. I mean, there were a number of just amazing entries in that competition. There will be more giveaways. We still have stuff to give away. So the next scenario, um, tomorrow, if you have a look at the um, schedule, you can see what I'm planning on, uh, what I'm looking at running next. And next is back to Nestland, the uh, the uh, charity route donation web route that was made. Fridge style in Port Road is um, what became Western Lines of Scotland, yes. Fridge style, how did I meet my wife? Um, so we were on um, what's called a uh, effectively a mold, a mud, a multi user dungeon uh, online. It was effectively the equivalent of Warcraft back in the day, you know, um, World of Warcraft. It was all done in text, a bit like the old text adventures. And um, I, what a friend and I used to run one of these things, a Star Trek Next Generation themed one. Welcome back, Rubku. And um, my wife's always been a Trekkie as well, and um, she happened to log in, and uh, well, we just got friendly. And about a year later, um, she moved over to the or she came over to the UK for a holiday, and she hasn't been back since. Well, she has one holiday, but. Zombification is kicking in nicely, yeah, really. Brains. <laughs> uh, who is the bigger trick in here? My missus. Oh, probably the missus. state is she from? She, um, when I met her she was at Utah, she was at Brigham Young University, um, but um, she's originally from Massachusetts, she was born in Concord. Bye. See you later James Dog. I'm pretty much I'm starting to <laughs> I'm starting to fall apart now, but what's the difference between Port Road and Western Lines? Western Lines is just a heck of a lot bigger. And the bit that was in Port Road was uh, I think um, redone quite considerably.
miles for narrows. What's that total distance? 15 miles. This was quite a long scenario. German stuff coming up in the morning, um, and particularly there's a couple there from um, Jan Chidoba that I'm really looking forward to uh, having a look at. Tomorrow if we do 10 prize giveaways we're going to run out and not have anything left so I'll do the next one as a 5. I mean, I wrote a three-hour scenario myself, but I ran two or three times when I was writing it. But I don't like scenarios that long. <laughs> I don't know why I wrote it that way. <laughs> Well, my Donna Pass three hour scenario was an hour shunting, an hour driving, and an hour shunting switching. Yeah, I saw the seven hour scenario from Madlib. It's not something I can say I was desperate to rush into doing. J.J. Abrams Star Trek movies. Well, they're okay as movies, but they don't really feel Star Trek. They just feel like they're in the Star Trek universe with the same characters, but... I read... Uh, there was something about them that didn't really gel very well, and I read an article about them basically saying that they were missing that... Everything Roddenberry did had that positive message of the hope for humanity. And the new films don't do that, they're just action movies. Which isn't bad, and I mean, I enjoy watching them. But... That's summed up nicely to me what they were missing, and why they were different to the stuff that wasn't really involved in. Yeah, Roddenberry and
speed back up to 6 to 45 in a minute. Neil, thank you for the host. You see the whole train? Yeah, absolutely. But the train, the whole train, and nothing but the train, yeah? That has got much quite quiet. We always get a bit quiet, at sort of uh, after midnight, even on the normal streams. The uh, stream started at 1.30, so we should be finishing sometime after 1.30.
Uh, BNSF, there was a scenario that I had planned you asked me to not do because you deleted it. So I took it out. Steam locomotive, sit down because it has a tender behind. Uh. Well, Amtrak Phase is my favourite, I don't really know enough about them to be honest. Uh, BNSF, to be honest, when I was looking around trying to make the scenario pile up um, I was out of time to go and look for things so I, um, and I didn't actually need it as it is, I'm not going to get to play even, you know, a lot of the ones at the end of this list probably aren't going to get looked at being kid because he isn't a conductor <laughs> yes dash eight Pepsi cans yeah I'll wear that Amtrak lower No, I've just heard them all before. <laughs> I don't know, we might make it to the 180 scenario, um, Fringe. <coughs> I certainly do be in SF. Train coming the other way. Four eleven. We should start brightening up in a minute. A little while. Finish this scenario. I shall go and pay a visit, let the fresh air outside wake me up. So normally I'd have the door wide open, freezing the heck out of the place, but I can't do that because I've got that stray cat out there. Word 
Taylor North. Those who steal trains must have a locomotive. Duh. Will I get to every scenario on the sheet? No, Chris. That was never the intention. I wanted to make sure I had enough scenarios planned that we'd run, run through the stream and not run out. Cheers, Apple. Thanks for the donations. How does a steam trainee? I'm guessing it choo choo choos. Oh, this is a food monster guy. Right, okay, being a Sith fan, I know I recognise food monster guy. That's it. <laughs> Killarney North, truck two, four miles. Oh, hello, that means we're not far off finish then, right? North loop siding, south loop. Yep, yeah, they're all in roughly the same place, so four miles. How do you make antifreeze? You leave her out in the freezing weather. To make a sausage roll, pull it down and push it down a hill. How many miles? 3.4 miles to get to Gilali North Track 2, and then it's just around the corner from there. 4.9 miles in total. Sam Trent run over for the river, yes, I believe so. bacon that's been burnt, bacon. <laughs> Would GG1 work on Soul Summit? No, because it's, it's an electric loco and this is a diesel route.
No, I haven't seen the new Metrolink locomotives. You send me a picture of um, them, Flashy Sinkin. Have I ever done a GG1 scenario? I certainly have, baked bean kid. <laughs> have you ever seen the movie Constipation? It hasn't come out yet. <laughs> Kangaroo cross with a sheep is a woolly jumper. Yeah, 1.7 miles. under the mile now, Puns about monorails always make for decent one-liners. <laughs> Alright, we're up to North Loop siding. earlier and they took your mood drink. Don't really know how to feel about that. <laughs>
These jokes are really bad. Point nine two stopping at the next waypoint, which is Gilali South South Loop siding. Good night, Mr. Purple Has, Mr. Purple Hayes. Hello, five three seven. Thank you for the follow. Two antenna had a wedding, so it was rubbish. Reception was brilliant. <laughs> Those new trains look all right. Yeah, it does look rather nice actually, that metro train. Folk Paka. <laughs> nice baked bean kid. to Drumness Oil. <laughs> right. <coughs> That's that scenario done. Drum Ness Oil next on Nestland. But I'm going to go for a quick toilet break and a wander around the garden and get some fresh air on my face. I will be back shortly. Right, I'll be back in a little while, uh, well, not in a little while, in a, in a couple of minutes, okay? See you shortly, folks. Bye.